So I ordered a new camera because this one is doing some weird things lately. So it, and it was supposed to come yesterday and it's not to here yet. So I'm just gonna use this. So bear with me if something crazy happens. Sorry, I blew up at you there at the beginning. Well, I'm over it and I hope you are too. How are you? Welcome, it's Wheezy Monday. I want to do a list of things you shouldn't worry about if you want to, I say be a YouTuber, but it could be like any, any creative thing. Um, if you want, if you want to do, and, and you know, when you talk about being a YouTuber or making YouTube videos or being successful on YouTube or being successful in media in general, you, you could be coming from this, you could be coming at this from so many different places. Um, and so obviously all of this only applies somewhat depending on what, what you're doing. And it, you might not just be one person. You could be a team of people. Are you yourself a team of people? If that's true, that defies, um, physics and everything. But you know what I mean? If you, if you're a company trying to make YouTube videos, if you're, if you're doing, if you have a specific industry you're trying to tap into or something, there's different, there's different reasons to become a YouTuber. When I make this list, and usually when I make any list or talk about anything about productivity and about what to do to make it, um, I'm thinking, I'm coming at it from what I know, which is the way I came at it, which was when I was in my late twenties by myself. Um, and I wanted to make a YouTube channel because it looked fun. I definitely did want to do it for a living. I wanted to be in, I wanted to make entertainment for a living. Um, and I wanted to do it in my own way. I wanted to be independent. I wanted, basically I wanted to be funny and make people laugh. Nowadays, I feel like I, I'm going for something a little different on YouTube. I'm trying to, trying to find, I'm trying to be funny, of course. That just is naturally what I'm always trying to do. Well, not always on this channel, but um, I want to discover. I'm curious. I want to learn things about the world and about myself and about how to improve my health, my productivity. And I just want to, or I want to learn about, you know, why do people like exercise? Why do people like, um, uh, what's another one that I've done? Well, the first one I, of those that I did was why do people like haul videos? Uh, why do people like popping pimples? Why do people like various things? I tr I'm trying to, I have a specific purpose, I suppose, nowadays. But when I first started, that, I guess that was in the background, but it was mostly, I just want to entertain for a living and I want to figure out how to do it with, with what I have. Uh, I want to, I want to be my own boss. I want to not have, I want to get out of the rat race I'm in and I want to have, I don't, I want to do this for a living. Um, and so when I made this list, I'm thinking in terms of what will give me the longest term happiness in a career like this. And, uh, I, it's a list of things to not worry about. So, um, obviously all of these things somewhat, yes, you have to, they will become something you have to be concerned with. But when you're starting out, to me, as far as I can tell, there are things you shouldn't worry, they're, they're less important. I'll just, I'll just spoil the ending. To me, the most important thing is to look at object, as objectively as possible as, at what you have and use that. Figure out what kind of value you want to provide. You want to be funny. You want to teach people uh, about world history. You want to show off your woodworking skills or teach people how to have their own woodworking skills, whatever various uh, infinite possibilities. Figure out what type of value you want to provide. Look at what you have available to you, your knowledge and your gear or whatever it is, use it and use it consistently and learn as you go. Like that's basically it. Uh, that's what I did ultimately. Um, so th with that said, 
the list of things you shouldn't worry about. Number one, don't worry about originality. I feel like that is something that um, really slows, has slowed me down in the past, and I, I see it in other people who, who don't do things because they see that they've already been done. Um, I made a video a long time ago about how nothing is original. In fact, the idea for this video is not original. Obviously, people have done lists of tips for how to become a YouTuber or whatever many times. I just saw one yesterday from Ali Abdal, great productivity guru, YouTuber, also a doctor. Kind of, I'm, I'm amazed at how much he gets done, actually, and how and his work ethic and his excitement to keep getting things done. Um, yeah, but he's, I just also learned that he's 26 uh, to be young again. I started doing this when I was 27. Um, but he made a video, my top 10 tips for aspiring YouTubers. Um, and I saw that and I was like, huh, I, I, I'm interested in watching what he has to say about it. So I watched it and, and, I, and I had a brief thought, like I should do this. And like, but he's, he just did it. Why would I? And then I thought, well, that's one of the things you shouldn't worry about. Obviously, there's probably been five, ten, maybe even hundreds of others who have done that since I saw his video, who have uploaded something similar, because people are uploading things all the time. Um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of things, millions of things being uploaded while I am shooting this. Um, of course, you will find others who have done a thing the way that similar to what you're doing. So don't worry about that. If you are honest, if you come at it from a place of this is the type of value I want to provide, this is the type of, um, this is, this is who I am and this is what I want to do. And you come at it from a genuine place of interest and curiosity. That's all that matters. Whatever comes out will be original enough to you. It'll be authentic, regardless of whether it's original. Um, I think people, I think people maybe confuse the two, <clears throat> being a, um, being unoriginal and being inauthentic. I think you can directly copy something. That's wrong. <laughs> Just to look at something and be like, oh, I'm going to do it exactly this way, and hopefully the people who haven't seen that one, and then I, I win all the glory and goodies. Um, we're all doing this for glory and goodies, right? Uh, that's, that's copying. That's plagiarism. That's, that's not just being unoriginal. That's, that's, that's blatant ripping off. But, but being authentic can also be unoriginal. Like you could authentically arrive at something that you want to create or that you do create that someone else did, but you didn't know it. Or maybe you did know it. But it just so happened you also did the same thing. That doesn't mean it's, it's bad. It doesn't mean it's there's something uh, less valuable about it. If it's authentic, if it comes from you, um, if you truly believe in the thing that you're doing. So don't worry about original, being original just for the sake of being original. Um, that'll slow you down. That'll keep you from doing things which I think ultimately is worse. I mean, you shouldn't just do things for the sake of doing things. You shouldn't just do the first idea that pops in your head, but you also, in general, should err on the side of being productive and making things rather than keeping them in your head. And it, worrying about being unoriginal um, will slow you down. And uh, I can't believe it's already, we're nine minutes into this video and I've only done the first thing on the list. This always happens when I do these Wheezy Monday videos. Um, second thing, don't worry about branding. Branding. I didn't even, that word wasn't even in my lexicon when I started. I didn't think about it. I did have an, I did have a, an intro. I think I naturally did do branding. I made a logo, I made an intro just because that's how it, I, just what I thought you do years of growing up watching tv and movies seeing logos and titles at the beginning of things zay frank my biggest inspiration he had a, a sort of intro graphic so i did but i didn't think about it in terms of branding this is my brand i didn't think about it in terms of business of marketing of like anything outside of the video itself i just thought 
this just feels right to have a thing at the beginning. Now I don't. I don't even put a thing. I do it I do on the Wheezy News channel, but I don't on the main channel because I don't see a purpose for it. On this channel, I, the purpose to me is, hey, this is Wheezy News. This isn't the main channel. <laughs> That's basically the reason I have it. Um, but uh, branding, like... Ultimately, yes, maybe you will have to, if you want to expand your business in some way, if you want to make shirts or mugs or you want to have a your own in-person store or something, uh, branding is important, I suppose. But it, when you first start out, don't think about that. Don't worry about branding. I didn't even, I still don't really think about branding, except that I have to because people talk about it. Um... It just naturally comes out. My brand comes out. If I start trying to adhere to a specific idea of a brand, that to me hurts my creativity and hurts my productivity, and I lose sight of the purpose of the thing I'm making. Well, this doesn't really fit my brand. I mean, I guess, I'm sorry, I'm sounding like <laughs> making fun of the idea. I guess I get it. I get the importance of caring about a brand. But to me, that's never been a thing that I paid attention to too much. And if I ever started to, it kind of hurt my, my productivity. Um, don't worry about promotion. Don't worry about um, how to, like how effectively you are um, advertising your stuff, like on other social media. On, if, you do, if you're doing YouTube videos, putting it on Instagram, putting it on Facebook, putting it on Twitter. I do those things. I, I, I let people know that I made them. Um, but if you get too bogged down by like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna um, get this out there in the world? I feel like when you're first starting out, you lose sight of the thing you're making itself. To me, the thing you're making yourself, just focus on the making that good and having a purpose and being true to what you want. Um, if you're just worrying about, I mean, I'm sure there are examples where people have gone all in and just worried about branding and promotion and very little about the actual thing they're making and found success. I guess that exists. Uh, I can't do that. I, um, I, I, it just, number one, is just not fun. I just don't enjoy that kind of thing. And I mean, I do, I do do it occasionally now, but when I started, no way, I didn't think about that. And that's probably why it took so long before I ever eventually found an audience. Maybe, but then I think, then I find other examples and it seems like the amount of time it took me to find an audience, 100 videos, like three years. Um, at that point I had 32 subscribers and then I finally found an audience. I hear stories now that that is actually kind of the standard. Um, so maybe even if I had worried about branding and promotion and such, it wouldn't have done me much good. It would have just taken energy away from actually making the things. Um, so, uh, worrying about, you know, paying money to have ads for your thing. Uh, I don't, I just, I never did that. And I don't, I don't think it's helpful for what I want to do. Um, and then don't worry about, this is something I've talked about many times, a lot of people talk about this, and I only think it's partially true a lot of the time when people say they don't worry about this, um, including me, but don't worry about numbers. Inevitably, you will, and I do, and it's just not helpful. I really don't see a way why... Analytics, I guess, is important to figure out what you're, what you might be doing wrong, wrong in the eyes of your audience. Um, later on, that's important. But when you're first starting, no way. And I leave, and I don't even pay that. I probably should pay more attention to analytics. I don't really pay that much attention to it. Um, I never have. Uh, but just raw numbers like view counts, likes, comments you're inevitably just going to compare yourself to others and how much how much they have and how much versus how much you have and it's not helpful at all because it's not really it's hard to find an exact equivalent like well they got this many views and I got this many views well they might be doing something entirely different um their impact and your impact 
is not just measured by views. There's different types of impact um, that you're making or different types of value that you're providing. So just looking at numbers is kind of like I could go look at Taylor Swift's numbers compared to me and be like, oh man, Taylor Swift, she's doing so much better. <laughs> when it's a completely different thing and um, also just kind of, you know, it's a ridiculous thing to do. That's an extreme example, but I feel like there's every single example, every time you look at someone else's numbers, it's still, it's still, a, it's still different. Like me and Tyler Swift is different. It's just a matter of degrees different. It might be slightly this. It's just, you're not going to find an equivalent, you know? Um, I mean, I guess if you're doing gaming, let's play videos and someone else is doing let's play videos, it's pretty, I guess you could maybe compare the two, but it's, it's even then it's not helpful because it's, it, it's the wrong thing. Knowing that they're doing better, how does that help you? It could, it more likely will discourage you. More likely will just make you feel bad, which will affect what you create. It could inspire you to try harder, I suppose. Ultimately, though, you should probably keep it out of your mind and focus on what you're making. Um, I truly believe that if you put a lot of time into a thing and it has it has genuine value and is genuinely well put together and conveyed, and that value is conveyed, I truly believe you will find that audience. Um, maybe not with one, but with all, but being consistent and doing it over time. Um, now we must take a second to thank today's sponsor, Craig, with another shirt on. Thank you, brother from the same mother. Craig, it's a pleasure to share this video with you. And might I say, you look beautiful. Yowza. Damn. Mm. And that brain on you, brilliant. Org, which is the sponsor of this video. They're a problem-solving website in subjects like mathematics, science, computer science, over 60 courses. You heard of the Daytona 500? That's only one course. This is 60 times that, which is a lot, which I know because I go to brilliant.org. Now, math and science sometimes can sound scary. I know, I get it. It was scary for me back in school, but that's because I enrolled in Banshee School. I shouldn't have done that. But in fact, Brilliant.org is not scary at all. It is a delightful experience of guided discovery. I had a good time doing the logic truth-seeking course. Suppose you're visiting an island with knights who always tell the truth, knaves who always lie, and jokers who do either. They say, I am a knave. Well, a knave would not say the truth that it's a knave, and a knight would say it's a knight. A joker will just say anything, so it's gotta be a joker. It's a joker. It's a smoker, maybe. Don't smoke, kids. It's definitely a joker. Why so serious? And you can see explanations of the answers because it's not about memorizing formulas, it's about taking basic concepts and applying them, developing your intuition and turning it possibly into in three-ition or in four-ition. I've heard tell of in five-ition, but that's just unrealistically high amount of ition. But if you're itching for some ition, Try brilliant.org. Consider that your new slogan, brilliant. There is a wide range of content like interactive courses in mathematics fundamentals, quantitative finance, scientific thinking, special relativity, programming with Python, machine learning, perplexing probability, casino probability, waves and light, gravitational physics. Go to brilliant.org slash wheezy news and sign up for free. And the first 200 people that click get 25% off their annual premium membership. Now back to Craig in a different time and possibly different shirt. Hopefully, because I've already worn this one a few days in a row. Another one, don't worry about gear. Gear is something I've also, I started this video complaining about gear, but um, yes, you have to have gear that works. Uh, and now I'm able to afford better gear. But when I started, I just used what I had, which was a crappy little Sony handheld, um, what was it, Hi8 tapes. Um, I plugged it in with a Firewire to my, remember Firewires? Probably not. I fired it into, fired my Firewire into my computer just and just, made things. If you look at my very first Wheezy Waiter video, I just looked at, I just tried to uh, make it as convenient as possible. Uh, I knew that I wasn't doing what you're supposed to do when you shoot video, supposed to do. I'm doing that a lot. I'm doing this way too much for this video. I'm sorry about all the air quotes. 
I hope, I hope you're listening to this as opposed to watching it because you're not seeing all those quotes. Um, the uh, I shot it right into the windows behind me and it was really overexposed. Looked kind of crappy. It was just, I didn't even have a tripod. I just put it on my desk. It was like down and just a crappy camera. I just used what I had, popped it in, edited. So you have to worry about gear insofar as get the gear that can allow you to do the bare minimum. Get the gear you can afford, I guess. And most of us these days have cameras right on our phones. Start there. Uh, and if you feel like you need to edit and you're having trouble, find a cheap editing software to be able to piece together some video. But don't get bogged down by the fidelity of it, the look of the video, the the tight, awesome transitions, the cool music, the um, just all that technical stuff. Just make sure that the thing you want to convey, you are conveying. That's, I think, number one. I mean, I keep saying that, and I think it's true, but yes, I understand that sometimes you don't know what you want to convey. That's a hard thing to find out, too. Like, what you know that you love making video, you know you love editing, you know you love shooting, but you don't know what it is the subject that you want to tackle i get i mean i understand that I, I guess i've had that problem in the past too um i feel like you got to find it ultimately i think you can get you can get pretty far on just technical stuff um or you could just go into being a technical guru and just talk about tech i suppose that's one that's a route to go as well um But if you want to do something, if, if you just get all bogged down by shooting and for the look of it, for the sound of it, and all of that, I feel like when you're just starting out, that's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to, to get you going, to finding an audience. Audiences really care about having a reason to watch a thing, getting value out of a thing. There's plenty of places to find uh, clever editing, good editing, good camera, good technical stuff. Uh, if that's all, the, the only value you are providing, well. But if you get a good image of, of your city and you talk about your city or it's just a unique image that I don't know now I'm getting into originality um, I don't know what I'm saying here I'm just saying don't worry too much about the gear worry about getting the thing out there use what you have don't spend us I think the big when people say don't talk about worry I think the big issue is people go all in and they spend a ton of money on gear without even knowing um, how to use it and you can get a lot done with very cheap gear. Uh, I usually buy, I'm buying more expensive gear now. I'm able to afford it, but it's mainly for convenience. I have, this camera shoots very well, very easily. I think cheaper cameras shoot just as well. It's just not quite as convenient. Um, like this one, I have, I have it mostly on auto everything. Uh, and so far it's, it's holding up, which is good. When I get my new camera, I'm going to go get this one repaired or send it in to get it repaired. And then, um, but that's a whole other story. Uh, it's on auto everything. I understand, I understand what's going on technically after years of using these cameras, but I'm able to set it up so that like my, my silent focus, it's a nice lens that I can zoom in to just have a nice, comfortable look to it. Um, it handles light very well. It uh, it has this flip out screen, which I find very convenient. Although I keep looking at it, which you you know, and which might be a problem. But it's but I do need I need a, a flip out screen to see what I'm shooting, and a lot of these cameras don't have that. And I have a nice mic that works well with the camera, and I have it all set the system set up in a way that I know the volume and I know how to pop it into the editing program and put it in the um, put. Uh, compress the audio just the way I want it 
it's all there. It's all set up so I don't have to think about it. So I've, I've figured out, I've spent money to get the gear to be able to not think about it. Um, but when you're starting out, you might have to think about those things more if you can't afford the, the high-end gear. Um, but I also think you shouldn't just, if you don't have, if you can't afford it, just spend a ton of money on this great gear without knowing how to use it. Um, because that's not even the most important thing. The most important thing is what you are making, not how you are making it. Um, let, let what you want, what you're making be the, the goal, uh, be the thing on your mind. How do I get to this thing that I want to make? And I'll, I'll use whatever I have to get there. Don't worry so much about, I'm going to get this great gear that will allow me to discover what it is that I want to make. You know what I mean? Um, don't worry about current skill level. You have a certain level of skill right now. You might not, of course, worry about constantly learning and learning new skills and getting better, but to start, don't worry. Don't think that you don't have enough knowledge, enough skill. Um, you have a certain level of skill, of knowledge. Use it. Use what you have. Objective, just be objective about, um, this is what I know, this is what I can do. Do that. Do that well. Do that as well as you can. The more you do, the more you'll learn. Um, don't think that you need, you, well, it's nice to go and learn things, like at brilliant.org, for instance, um, and, and useful, but that doesn't, shouldn't keep you from starting. Uh, because doing it also teaches you. I think people can use uh, their current skill level as an excuse, or lack of skill level to, as an excuse to not start. And uh, I think it clicked with me when I started, was that when I was 27, and I was like, well, if I don't start now, when am I gonna start? I know that there are a lot of, there's a lot of things I don't know, but I'm 27 years old and I should probably just go jump in and discover what I don't know and learn as I go. And that's what I've done and still do. And it's working. So, um, more or less. I fail all the time, but that's fine. So that's it. That's my, my list of don't worries. Uh, like I said before, a lot of these things, yeah, they matter. But if, if the goal here is to get started, if the goal is to be productive. If the goal is to uh, provide a certain value, focus on that. Focus on the value you're trying to provide and figure out the best way to convey it, to provide it, whatever that is. Um, all this other stuff is secondary or completely unnecessary. To this day, I don't pay much attention to analytics. I probably should, but kind of stubborn in the sense that I like doing what I like doing and I just want to do it regardless of what what the audience wants that's kind of the way I've always been um, which is why you know I can my channel can be my channels can be kind of inconsistent and uh, ultimately maybe that affects the bottom line and it affects the growth of the channel but why is that always the why does that have to be the default always growing? Uh, being the biggest possible channel you can be, making the most possible money. Um, uh, fame, glory, money, it's all, it's all nice. Um, but why does it always have to be the, num the, the absolute focus of everything? I mean, providing value in whatever way you can, ma making a video that you feel is insightful or improves or helps people in some way. Um, uh, yeah, it'd be great if that reached the most people possible. Um, but the fact is certain things are only going to reach a certain amount of people who are interested uh, and your style is only going to be appealing to a certain amount of people. So why worry so much about constantly growing? If you, if you start to worry too much about that, you will lose whatever you lose part of whatever it is that you originally wanted to provide. 
because you will have to adjust. You'll have to change something about the way that you convey the information or what information, in fact, that you are conveying. We, when we worry only about the, what's the most popular, what's going to pop, what's going to go viral, we eliminate a lot of different subjects um, that are also valuable. And so that's my philosophy on the whole thing anyway. Mostly I try, I have a balance. I obviously care, care about view counts and subscriber. I, I, want, I made it a goal to get a million subscribers. So I do care about numbers. I care about all these things on occasion. Um, but I try to find the balance where I'm, I care about them enough so that I can continue to do this. Um, and, and in so far as they are going to bring excitement to me and motivation to me, but also try my best to still do whatever I want. If I get to a point where I'm just doing things because I feel like it will bring growth or money and that's it. The only reason I'm doing a thing, I'm going to try my best to say no to quit, to stop doing it. Um, and that to me leads to the most long-term uh, satisfaction. I don't know if happiness is the right word because happiness has a lot of meanings, but like contentment, comfort, uh, just uh, satisfaction with my life. Um, and I feel like Continuing to have that attitude will keep me away from uh, many of the pitfalls that you get into in this crazy social media world we live in. Um, so, I hope you found some sort of value out of that. And uh, I also am still... Uh, what, what else is going on? There's the Wheezy Discord, which I mentioned last time. Wheezy House. Um, link down there. There's a creator scholarship that's still, um, if you want to apply to that, you can still apply to, which I'll link down there. Wheezy, Wheezy Creator Scholarship with bold.org. Um, and I, uh, I have a Patreon where I do, I currently do these kind of videos every weekday. I um, just recently announced, though, that I will be ending the week daily Patreon videos April 1st, not an April Fool's joke. Um, so if you want to get in on the, for the last few, several, you can. Um, I'm doing a kind of an overhaul of Patreon. It's still going to be there. There's still going to be a lot of perks. Uh, that one's kind of going away. Uh, I say kind of because I'm still going to drop in and update and everything. Um, but yeah. Still got a Patreon going on, and that's about it for now. So I'm working on my Why Do People Like Living in Cold Places video. I've interviewed several people, and I'm, I'm going to start jumbling them together and figuring out, not the people, but the interviews, footage, and figuring out how to make this into a good video. Uh, my parents will be in the video, both in an interview setting and in at their dining room table setting. Um... If you watch the main channel videos, you know what I'm talking about, I think. And uh, that's about it. Thank you for just continuing to be around and uh, being there for me to provide value to. It makes me feel important, and that's what's really important here, right? Making me feel good. Okay.